Wearing Storm here and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program tutorial. Before I begin, I just want to say thank you to all who have given me feedback and subscribed. This is the first time I'm making a YouTube channel and it's your feedback that's helping me shape the channel we all can like. So thank you all. Right now we can see Jabadiah flying across the moon at breakneck speeds. And in this tutorial we are finally going to learn how we get to the moon. So let's see the spacecraft that will take us there. So here is our rocket that will take us to the moon. On top we have the landing stage with four landing gears, a ladder and two solar panels. On the sides we got two small fuel tanks and two small aerospike engines. These fuel tanks and aerospike engines will be the stage that's taking us to the moon. In the middle we have a fuel tank that will help us get the orbit and start our transfer burn. On the bottom we have six solid fuel engines that are about to run out and we have three liquid fuel engines that will take us the rest of the way up. So in this tutorial I'm going to try to get an orbit around 85,000 meters and why I've cho chosen this particular altitude is that um, when you want to go to the moon you don't want to waste a lot of fuel to get a high orbit and you also want to keep as much momentum as possible when doing a slingshot from Kerbin to the moon. Now actually it is easier to go to Minmus than it is to go to the moon. Uh, you will use 100 extra delta V to get to Minmus but you will save about 800 delta V when slowing down and doing an orbit around Minmus. So that's something nice to know if you have trouble getting to the moon you can try to go to Minmus first. But this tutorial is going to be on going to the moon because I guess that's what you guys really want to do. And we are now going over to map view to see our app apps. It's about 35,000 meters and we still want to keep it climbing. So in the rocket today we got Bill Kerman and he is screaming his head off. He doesn't look too happy about going to space. Uh, we should have had Jebediah, I think he's much cooler, he's always smiling and laughing when we are going through space, even though he's about to crash and die. But Bill will have to do for today. So our orbit is now at 75, 80, and cut the engines. That was a pretty good cut actually. and. We are just going to physics warp until we get to s about 75,000. That's when we can do full warp. And we will do that until we get to our app wipes, where we'll do our circular circularization burn. And there's nothing special about this from earlier. We just want to get a nice orbit around Kerbit. But we don't need a perfect orbit for this. We just need something that's above the atmosphere and that's good enough for uh, making detailed or to plan our next burns. So we don't want to have like 50,000 meters difference, but having uh, 10,000 meters, it's really is not a problem. It just makes using the maneuver nodes later a little bit more difficult. But we're now over to our transfer tank and burning with the aerospikes engines. And the aerospike engines are pretty efficient when you get into space. You have about nine, uh, 3,390 3, uh, impulse, sorry, tongue tied. And uh, that's pretty good when you are in space to have something that's efficient and doesn't use too much fuel. You, Of course you have the nuclear engines, but there's really no 
reason for using them inside your own system, the Kerbal system. You can if you want to save some fuel, but they're not that powerful, you only get, I don't know, remember, I think it's about 60 kilonewtons. So, but these get 175, so that's a lot more power that we can use. And we want to go to the moon quickly. But when you're doing an interplanetary mission, you would like to use as little fuel as possible. So that's when the nuclear engine comes into its own element. And we are going to do a tutorial on that later. Probably the next tutorial is going to be an interplanetary probe. I already made the probe and just have to record it and I think that will be a good tutorial. And we'll probably go for, I don't know, Duna, Eve or maybe Jewel. I actually haven't been to Jewel myself. I've been to many of the other planets but I've never gone to Jewel so we we'll probably do that. That will be fun for me too. So we have 800 delta V and 26 seconds burn. And we want to watch the transfer tank because it's going to burn out quickly. And we don't want to have an extra, or we don't want to have extra mass and weight dragging us, dragging that extra tank. So even though it's empty, it weighs something and that something will slow us down and waste our precious fuel. We don't have time to waste fuel in Kerbal Space Program. So I'm just aligning my orbit, getting it into a position where I'm satisfied with the periaps. I don't want it too low because that will have then I'll have to have uh, a lot of braking speed, I use a lot of fuel on braking, but it also shouldn't be too high so it will make the landing a lot easier. So 4 hours till encounter and we'll warp to the moon. And it's kind of neat seeing the moon coming up next to us, I guess if we go into camera mode we'll <coughs> we can see the moon coming closer and closer. And there we were captured by the moon. That's when the camera changes direction. It's kind of annoying sometimes, but I don't know. I've tried free and automatic and all the different views and sometimes it doesn't, but most of the times it just switches camera angle. But never mind. Let's make a maneuver node and see how much delta V we need to slow ourselves down. So about 230 and we'll just warp the last 10 minutes and let's check our fuel reserves. We have plenty of fuel for this. This will be great. And approaching our node and giving us some time to maneuver. I usually don't give myself too much time so hopefully I find a maneuver node on the first try. And we'll do our retrograde burn, getting it circularized around the moon. And this doesn't have to be too perfect either, because we are landing on the moon. So let's find a landing spot. It looks like the dark side is coming around, so we'll probably land somewhere close to this crater or maybe in the middle here. We'll see what suits us when we are starting our descent. So for that we are going to do a burn about there I guess. And This is just a lot of using the maneuver nodes and finding finding a path that suits you. And I think that will take us close enough to the crater. Uh, as you can see the orbit is pointing to this edge but I'm actually 
heading for this. I'm planning to land somewhere between here. I usually think it's a little difficult to plan my landings. That's something I have to get better at. But we will try and see what I can do. And we only have one second burn, so that looks very good. Looks like we're gonna have plenty of fuel for this mission, after all. Uh, so the reason why I'm not taking the the orbit all the way to where I'm going to land, that is because I want some altitude when I'm doing my braking and maneuvering for the landing. Because it would be kind of sad if I was going to do the landing and I already, or I was going to break for the landing and start preparing the spaceship spaceship and everything for landing and I already crashed into the ground so I want planned orbit so it goes over my <coughs> target and I also usually start my start my break breaking or retrograde burn at about 20,000 meters so it looks like we're gonna land somewhere here in the middle and this is just going to be stopping the the horizontal velocity we're not going to think about the downward or lateral velocity and we just want to make the spacecraft have a horizontal velocity close to zero it doesn't have to be exactly zero but will you see the orbit going down and we can start getting an estimate on where we're going to land so this is a nice flat place to land if I really wanted to go over to the crater we could have done some burns on the way correction burns but it really wasn't that big of a deal I'm just showing you how to land on the moon so locking it into retrograde and taking out the landing gear so here comes the part, the difficult part or where it's a good idea to save because there is no good way of telling how far it's down to the moon. There is a radar and altimeter inside the capsule but it only starts showing altitude when it's about 3000, uh, 2000 meters left to ground I think. So that's a little late, or actually, it would be perfect, but I don't like sitting inside. I don't trust it, I guess. But um, just taking it down, and I'm taking a wild guess that the surface is at around 2000 meters somewhere. So as I get closer, I'm just bringing the downward speed down so I have enough room to make a burn stop burn before I hit the ground and we are looking like we are making a good descent here trying to keep it on the retrograde marker all the way and we're getting pretty close let's see if we can find a shadow no we haven't got a shadow yet and just keeping it burning slowly down on 20,000 straightening up like 20,000 20 meters god I keep messing up the numbers today I, I apologize I'm a little tired I guess so we got our shadows and we can see how far and bringing it down good it was a little hard landing but that was good enough taking out the ladder and taking out the solar panels so Bill Kerman can explore the moon and I think that's about it what I got time for in this tutorial so the next part will be about getting home to Kerman so see you in the next part to be continued as they say on TV wearing storm signing off